Seems like there are three kinds of car people. Those who love high performance, those who crave comfort, and those who really don't care about them at all. They just want transportation from point A to point B. The Mercedes-Benz S560 kind of covers them all. It's powerful, sumptuous, and for people with high discretionary income, a way to ignore the driving experience by being driven. Most of you know that I shoot these videos, and when I do the running footage, I need somebody to drive for me. Usually that somebody is Martin Campbell. Today, Martin is riding. Martin, you doing okay back there? He's kind of the strong, silent type. Obviously, the S-Class life requires bank, even without a chauffeur. It begins at just over $91,000 for the 460 Turbo V6 version. This Turbo V8 560 with 4MATIC all-wheel drive just crests $142,000. Uh, think that's expensive? Consider that a Rolls-Royce Ghost begins at twice that price. Not all smart people are wealthy. Not all wealthy people are smart. Intelligent folks cross shop. And in this case, you'd be looking at Audi A8, BMW 7 Series, Lexus LS, maybe even Genesis G90. The S makes a statement, especially for owners that exit from the back door, which finishes closing for the weary wealthy. This sixth generation S has been around since 2014. 2019s get the grill previously reserved for V12 models. Yes, the AMG S65 gets a 12 cylinder with 621 horsepower and 738 pound feet of torque on tap. Impressive, if not excessive. The 560 runs with a four liter twin turbo V8 that pumps out 463 horses and 512 pound feet which really is perfectly adequate to power a 4,800 pound sled. Sounds classy too. The nine speed automatic gets the classic Mercedes stock controller. Will anybody use paddle shifters in an S class? The air suspension can self level and has modes for comfort or sport. Uh huh, sport. Again, all tires are driven on my tester. Mercedes claims the all-wheel drive version of the S560 does the 0-60 to 60 dash in 4.5 seconds. That's one-tenth of a second faster than the rear drive version. If every fraction of a second counts to you, it's so powerful but refined off the line, you may not realize how fast you're going until it's too late. Sort of like getting shot out of a Nerf gun. That same refinement banishes nearly all body roll and dive. The air suspension works wonders, giving this sumo some ballerina moves. It's no Porsche Panamera, but the Mercedes feels lighter on its feet than it rolls. A G-Force gauge shows what the S can do. Fire the chauffeur if they drive like this on a regular basis. Cornering? Uh, cornering is solid. It's not razor sharp. Come on, this is an S-Class Mercedes. It's like driving a cloud. If a cloud had a steel foundation, the 9-speed must be carved out of Teflon. It never calls attention to itself. The steering effort is light, but locked down on center. If you're buying one of these just to ride in, the driver has it easy, but hey, pay them a living wage, okay? This isn't just a car, it's a spa. The Mercedes energizing comfort system with settings for enjoyment, vitality, and warmth bundles the climate, fragrance, seat massage, music selection, and cabin lighting. There's definitely no setting called ambivalence. Did I mention this car is quiet? Very, very quiet. I could almost hear myself think. If I thought, says my wife. The driver's assistance package at $2,250 is a must-buy option. One use of automatic emergency braking would pay off that investment. The adaptive cruise control is especially well done. Using map data, it slows for bends, roundabouts, and toll booths. On the freeway, I found the lane keep assist drifted from side to side more than I'd like. There's even a tap to change lanes feature, you know, in case you're too tired to do it yourself. And if you must know, the EPA fuel economy averages 21 miles per gallon using specified premium fuel. Not bad, really. At this point, you might be thinking, Tom, you haven't criticized the S-Class much. 
Well, folks, there's not much to find fault with here. Dropping into this space every morning to take on the world? Uh, things could be worse. Materials are what you'd expect in a car at the $140,000 level. One sign of a big cabin is the GoPro shot here shows an awful lot of it. As you can see, this place is huge. Not only is it spacious, it's packed with tech. Here are some highlights. Consider these the world's smallest trackpads, and they work well to customize the twin 12.3 inch screens that are seamlessly joined. All sorts of things can be called up in these monitors, including what kind of massage you would like out of the seats. There's night vision if you don't want to wear those silly goggles while driving. I'm going to let this happen in real time. There's no shade for the panoramic roof. A push of a button lightens or darkens it. It's one of the things that impresses people most about the S-Class. Plus, it saves weight and complexity. Choose a new ambient lighting color every day, and it would take two months to get through them all. Both the driver and the passenger have easy access to the center console, which is not very deep. The next generation command user interface continues to be easier to use, but still, the system has a lot of pages and some features are deep in the menu. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. There's no way I'm gonna let Evil Twin test this pack seat. It's way too comfortable. Unfortunately, I have to get out to show you what it does. All right, I'll move. It's easy to see why Martin wanted to relax back here. It takes a while, but the gyrations are a crowd pleaser. A refrigerator can be had in this space to chill your La Croix water. Opening the doors makes it easier to belt up. To protect your assets, the seat belts have built-in airbags. Want to primp for the paparazzi? You can do that, or block them out, depending on your mood. It's no surprise that electronics can be charged and that there are all sorts of entertainment options, which reminds me, the Burmester audio system is symphonic. S-Class is a big sedan. Big sedans usually have big trunks. Think you know where I'm going with this. For one thing, the seats don't fold. Under the load floor, there's enough room for a laptop computer, probably the first place a thief would look. The S-Class is two inches shorter than a Chevy Tahoe, but is not very efficient on taking on cargo. A Kia Soul will take on four bundles behind the back seat, so one more than that? Eh, that's underwhelming. But few executives show up to board meetings in a Kia, even if it is a K900. The S-Class is visual shorthand for success. It's a very understated design, hardly a showy look. Its boldest statement is three DLR strips instead of two on the E-Class and one on the C. It's kind of a no-brainer that people would like this car. It may not be affordable, but it's powerful, roomy, comfortable, and composed, whether you drive or are driven. All right, folks, I've had this particular piece shot and in the can for some time. It's the last of the regular reviews that I photographed with my Sony RX10, which looks like a DSLR. Going forward, there will be a lot more of the FS7 that you all helped me buy. And I point that out because the RX10 is harder to shoot with, <laughs> like this shot that I could have sworn was in focus. At the end of the day, I'm trying to convey to all of you what I experience with a car, and good gear helps me to do that. I will say though, while the FS7 is smaller than the Panasonic P2 camera I used before, it's kind of a weird shape and doesn't travel well for events, so I'll be using the RX10 for those. That's probably more information than you want to know. Hope you enjoyed this look at a car you will probably never ride in, let alone drive. Uh, they can't all be affordable. It's fun to dream. And before I go, thought I'd share this with you. It's easy to recline the back seat, but not quite intuitive to return it to the standard setting. Maybe it's just me. How do you get the... <laughs> it takes a while. We could look at the manual, <laughs> but we're guys. And ladies and gentlemen, Martin here is an <laughs> IT specialist. That is what he does for a living. Ah! He's and special thanks to Martin, who gets up early every weekend to help me shoot these cars. And he does it for just a cup of coffee. Couldn't do it without him. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.
So I shoot these at Costco number one, where Costco started. It's on the flight path of Boeing Field. So I often wait for plane traffic, often. <laughs>